Well, hello everybody. Um, I hope this finds you well. Andy Spoons here, and I wanted to just really quickly talk about something that I'd posted on Instagram yesterday. So, uh, if you follow me there, um, you will already know. If not, consider going and checking that out. Um, I am taking a little bit of a trip. I'm doing some work with a band that I used to um, play with back in Canada. And while I'm going to be traveling with them, I still want to make sure that I have um, some carving tools with me. So I've decided to put together a little kind of flight case. Obviously it's still going to be um, under the, the plane, it's going to be checked luggage, uh, but I'm only taking a carry-on size suitcase and that's it. Uh, I'm going to be gone for 10 days. And so it all needed to fit in here. So we're going to talk about what's in here right now. So we may as well just run from our left to right. Um, it's a really simple setup, like I said, and I didn't really want to make things too difficult for myself. Um, I'll also show you the blanks that I have set out as well. But in summary, I have my 80 mil uh, slowed knife from Tamarkin Custom Knives, Yonatan. It's fantastic. Um, I have my small chip carving knife from Belzebu Crafts um, that I think I handled in Plumwood. Uh, because, you know, even though I might not be doing a lot of carving, I might just have some time on my hands to do something a bit meditative, and I think chip carving is a really uh, cool way to just, you know, practice your craft. I have this really lovely hook from um, Hinode, uh, it's Kiyoshi, it's a Japanese maker. Um, and it's a fairly aggressive hook, but the reason I'm bringing it, A, I handled it a little short, and the hook is versatile enough that I'll be able to do a bit of roughing work, and some finishing work. It's not necessarily a finishing knife, I would say, um, but still a really, really nice knife to use. And, and like I said, it's short, it fits. Here, let me just take these off so that you can see what we're working with. Um, and then that's it in the, in the way of carving. Like I said, I've already axed out my blanks, and I'll show you those in a second. Everything else is just sharpening, a little bit of design, and finishing. So I've got the... Uh, Wood Wax from Real Milk Paint Co, which I am a huge, huge fan of. Um, this is pretty much all I use for my finishing these days. Um, as a side note, this is not at all an ad, um, though they did send this through to me, um, but you can get some discounts on Real Milk Paint Co uh, stuff if you type in Andy, ooh, Andy Spoons 10, I think it is, you get 10% off at their site. Um, like I said, not an ad, I just really like their stuff. Uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. This is a really wonderful pencil for writing on uh, wet wood, green wood specifically. I've had people ask me um, what I would recommend, and this is it. It's not too waxy. A lot of the other ones that are, um, you know, specifically designed for wet timber or, you know, writing on glass, I find them too waxy. This is kind of nice. It doesn't smudge out on your hands too much. This is my um, extra fine and extra, extra fine DMT uh, diamond sharpening plate, and to be quite honest, I don't think I'm going to use this while I'm away. Um, it is quite fine, maybe if I needed to put an edge on my chip carving knife, I don't think I'm going to need to do any sharpening with my Tamarkin, it would be just stropping, um, but I'm not bringing a strop with me. That being said, this last little guy, is just a little something that I threw together that you might find interesting. So sharpening a hook knife, I use a dowel, and this is just a teeny tiny dowel with a bunch of Veritas green compound on it, and you basically just sharpen like this, and it'll put a really nice keen edge on the hook. Um, obviously, I won't be able to sharpen with uh, sharpen my slow knife, though what I am thinking of doing is putting some compound on the top and then potentially it's a tiny, tiny space, but it probably would work, to be honest. Um, if I do have to do any touch-ups, I've got this 10,000 grit sandpaper, which is way too fine a grit for any kind of edge adjustment, but it's basically on its way to stropping. So if the edge of my Tamarkin does start to get a little bit worn out, um, I can 
place that sandpaper on something, realistically, I'd put it on this plate. I hope you can see that. On this plate, um, and then I can just basically put a quick edge on. So that's it. That is that is everything that I'm taking for 10 days um, while I'm flying, and I will be putting this all in the um, checked baggage. So it'll, you know, it's kind of all, it's all safe and secure and all good to go. And it means that I can, you know, I don't know how much time I'm going to have. I'm actually doing some uh, guitar teching for a band. So I'm going to be pretty busy, but, you know, there's always time in the hotel afterwards. And uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice to make sure that I have some tools just to keep on carving when I can. So I'm sure that some of the more keen-eyed among you would realize that uh, I didn't talk about what I'm carving when I'm traveling, and so I thought I would go into my freezer and show you that. Um, again, because it's a small, compact layout that I need, um, I'm not carving any cooking spoons or, you know, bowls. So I axed out a whole bunch of, you know, just show you more. A whole bunch of spoon blanks, eating spoon blanks. Um, I axed these out yesterday, I took my time, um, and these have all been in the freezer to keep the moisture content um, as high as possible. Uh, got a whole bunch of really exciting timbers actually that I'm looking forward to working with. I've got some southern blackwood, I've got some native cherry, some silver birch, and um, some ornamental cherry as well. And so this is going to be more than enough. Uh, realistically, like I said, if I can carve a spoon a night, um, I'll be well ahead of the game. Realistically, it'll be a you know one spoon in a week because <laughs> I think I'm going to be pretty busy and we'll be moving from hotel to hotel uh, but these will be living in a Ziploc bag and I will probably put that Ziploc bag in another Ziploc bag uh, because as obviously as they start to thaw um, I don't want things getting wet so this will all be wrapped up in my carry-on and then that way when I get to a hotel or if we're you know hanging out at the back of the venue and we've got some hours to kill, I can go and find a nice quiet spot and, and make sure that I'm still carving. <laughs>